do it! Travis Downey, this is Adam Rosenberg, and this is another installment of The Blitz. Get you guys set for Friday night, uh, entering week four district play. We're, we're in the middle of it for some districts, of course, 2-4A with Fort Walton Beach, Niceville, Crestview. They start next week. Uh, but, but looking at this week's slate of games, we'll start uh, with Rocky Bayou on the road, uh, John Paul the second. Uh, how do you like this matchup? Well, you know, don't know much about John Paul. They are coming off a of bye week, which gives them a little extra time to kind of hone in on the intricacies of Rocky Bayou's uh, triple option right. offense. Rocky Bayou kind of coming off a, a, law, a one-sided loss. And, you know, I'm just going to go like I always do with the home team. I'm going to pick uh, John Paul II here, Rocky Bayou. Just, you know, I don't like them coming off a bye week for John yeah, Paul II. Yeah, yeah, that bye week makes a big difference. I'll go with John Paul as well. Uh, and then moving to District 1A, uh, a, a tight race there we expect this season. Uh, we have Northview at Baker. Northview, they're one of those unbeaten teams in the district. Baker, of course, coming off that loss to South Walton. Uh, how do you see this matchup taking place? Well, this is kind of one I, I looked at the at the picks this week, and I'm kind of alone on this one. I'm picking Baker and kind of an upset. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they've lost a couple of close games. I just feel like when teams have that happen, they're showing promise. Sure. They're showing that they have the, the ability to compete. They just haven't got over the hump. And I think this is the week where they kind of they kind of surprise some people. I don't think it happens this week. Uh, and last week I thought they could make that that jump, but four turnovers. You're, you're not going to win many games with four turnovers. Three interceptions and a fumble lost for Baker in a seven point loss to South Walton. Yeah, I'm bitter because I picked picked Baker, but uh, I, I'm going to go with Northview to win that one. Um, and then sticking in that district, South Walton on the road, coming off of a, a big win last week, of course, on the road at Holmes County. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to go with South Walton in this one. I think it's going to be a nip-tuck game, especially because it's going to be on the road. Uh, but I like South Walton. I just like Jay Gatto, and I like that defense, uh, an opportunistic defense, uh, as they were a year ago. I'm going to pick South Walton. What about yourself? I'm going to stick with South Walton, first of all, because they're the reason that I was 15-0 <laughs> and 0 last week. Right, right, right. Um, I was the only one. I was unaware you went undefeated. I, I went undefeated last week, 15-0, and 0, including my college that. picks. Wow. 15 and 0. 15 it's right up there if you forget. Um, okay. But again, Congrats. got to stick with South Walton. Um, because they made me look smart last week, which is a very rare occurrence. It's true. Um, also, and all those things you said, coming off a big win over a rival, they're going to be, you know, as long as they guard against the letdown, right. kind of coming off that big homecoming emotional home win, um, mm -hmm. I think they'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, sticking in the district, uh, Vernon, another undefeated team in District 1A play against similarly unbeaten Freeport at Freeport. Uh, Jim Anderson says they're the underdog. We've heard that before. Uh, I believe it with Vernon, a lot of speed. And early on, it seems like they were, you know, well regarded as the class of the district so far this season. I'm still going to go with Freeport. Uh, I just think it's going to be a close game, but I like Freeport. What about yourself? I think this has the potential to be one of the most entertaining games yeah. um, of, of this Friday. I'm going to stick with Freeport as well. I just like their offensive weapons. Mm -hmm. I like them playing at home. Um, and I honestly think. Still, so far this year, Nick Ellington is the most impressive yeah, player I've seen uh, in this area. So, I, you know, I'm going to stick with him. Uh, FAMU at Walton. Uh, was at the game in Defuniac last week, a big win over Mariana, a big rival. Uh, they looked really good. Trey Williams running and catching the ball out of the backfield. Liam Miller, we knew he could throw, threw for 280. He can run pretty well, too, uh, 70 yards and a score. I like Walton. FAMU is struggling this year. Uh, uh, they haven't won a game 0-4. Uh, I'm going to go with Walton to kind of keep their winning momentum going forward. Uh, same here. I mean, Walton, even if they weren't playing a struggling team, they, mm -hmm. I just feel like for a school that size, they have so many offensive weapons, and yeah. it's hard to match up with that for teams defensively. And, you know, a team led by a quarterback like Liam Miller, and who's, a, I guess, found another dimension to his game with the mm -hmm. ground game, it's it's too much for, for FAMU to overcome. And Walton's defense, too. We always talk about the offense. The defense was really impressive last week, uh, shutting out Mariana through almost three full quarters before they got one at their end. Very impressed with Walton. Uh, moving on to, uh, to, to 4A football now. Uh, this is kind of a, I don't know, this is a tweener. This is one I wasn't really sure about. Navarre visiting Crestview. Two physical teams, two teams that really like to run the ball and smash you uh, in the mouth on defense. How do you see this one shaking out? I think they're two teams that are very similar, like mm -hmm. you said. Um, I think the difference and the reason I'm picking Crestview is because I think they have a little more big play capability. Yeah. I think they have a little more explosiveness on offense with Jerry Seiler, I think. Right. They're more likely to, you know, this game's going to come down to a lot of, you know, punting and, and mm -hmm. field, field position and stuff type like that. And I think the difference will be who can come up with a big play, not having to sustain a long drive. Right. And I think Crestview's more likely to be able to, to come away with the win there. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it. I like Crestview just a little bit just because of that big play capability. 
you know, Colton Kane though, under center for Navarre, he can break a long run. But I think between uh, Garrett Teal and, and Siler, as you mentioned, uh, Cresty just a little bit more, you know, two-dimensional on offense. I'm going to pick them at home as well. So going with Crestview, uh, Milton at Fort Walton Beach. Fort Walton Beach coming in, as we all know, 0-3. Close loss, you were there. I mean, how do you see them rebounding from that loss to Clover? Well, like I told you last week, that was – Fort Walton Beach's loss to Clover last week was the probably the second most entertaining high school football game I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Um, just a great game by both teams. Fort Walton mm-hmm. Beach showed that they have an offense now. They, they've got the guy in Steve Strano to lead it. Um, you know, found Robert Willis a couple times. Right. Uh, found Dale Smith a couple times. You know, the running game was kind of non-existent, but the way they were tossing the ball around, they didn't need a running game. Mm-hmm. I think, that, like you wrote about um, in today's paper, that they're so hungry to get that win finally, and yeah. they've proven that they are they have the ability to do it. I think they come away with the win this week. I do too. I think for Long Beach, uh, you know, next week with district play looming and Crestview looming, I think they need that, that something positive to happen. I think they get it with Milton. And this is a Milton team, got a really athletic quarterback, but I think, uh, you know, you, you look at what they've done this season. You know, they lost to Gulf Breeze. Their lone win was against Freeport, a much smaller school. Uh, I'm going to go with Fort Walton Beach to kind of right the ship uh, heading into district play. Uh, and then, you know, this, we, we mentioned entertaining football games. This may be one of the better ones as well. Pace visiting Niceville uh, at Eagle Stadium. It should be a great game. My quick thought is Niceville is going to have to score more than the seven points they did a week ago uh, t- to get a win. And that, that passing game may have to make more of a, their presence felt. I like Niceville just because of that home field advantage they'll have there. But this is going to be a really close game and, and one that I think really could go either way. I agree with you there, but I also think it's, it's, it'd be foolish to pick against Niceville until, they, <laughs> until <laughs> someone beats them. Right, right. Um, you know, they, they, last week their offense was almost non-existent. They still found a way to win because of that great defense. Mm-hmm. And I think they'll have some weeks where maybe the defense isn't quite as strong and the offense picks them up. I just think they're one of those teams – that finds ways to win no matter what kind of struggles they're going through, and I think that continues this week. All right, so we're in agreeing there. All right, uh, and then uh, the game of the week, Chalk to Hatchie uh, at Pensacola, defending 3A state champion Pensacola, big district matchup. Pensacola hasn't lost in 18 straight games, second longest winning streak in the state behind Coco. Uh, it's also a team that hasn't allowed 14 points or more, or more than 14 points in 22 straight games. So. Their defense is, is what carries them. That I like Pensacola. Obviously, it's at home, and right now they're just at another level uh, than Choctaw. What, how do you see this one coming down? I mean, it's nothing against Choctaw. Pensacola right. is just a, they're the second-ranked team in, in Class 3A in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. They're playing at home. They're undefeated. Choctaw has looked good at times this w- this year. They've came up, coming off a big uh, win against right, Rutherford right. last Thursday, mm-hmm. which you were at. Um, it's I just think Pensacola is too strong. They're one of the best teams in the state. Yeah, and, and yeah. Choctaw, you know, they, 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 they kind of rediscovered that I-formation offense that they think fits that personnel. But I got to think with Pensacola's defense, you're just going right into the belly of the beast there. So Pensacola, in my opinion. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see, uh, you know, if, if I can go 15-0 again. Probably not. But uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next week.